We're cooking it up in here. Look at that. It is wonderful. Oh, they're such so pretty. Oof, what scrumptious. Everybody, I'm Vera Stewart and I am celebrating my birthday this weekend. I'm so happy to be celebrating it with you. And you know, every year I have a theme for the year, shocker. But this year I've got a milestone birthday coming up next February, 70 years. So I'm going to have identity at 70. That's gonna be my theme. I'm gonna be talking about it this entire year. And we're gonna do some food today that kind of represents who I am and what I need to do to improve. So we're gonna start with a peanut butter pate. This is a delicious dish for an appetizer. It's also great that I can do with my grandchildren. And then, you know, I get so busy during the day that I forget to eat lunch. Well, my husband has a vegetable soup that is so fantastic for this time of year, but I can freeze it in little containers, keep it in the cottage to have for lunch. And then, you know, what little girl ever said they wanted a German chocolate cake for their birthday? Well, that was always my favorite cake. So we're gonna go through all the steps of making that. So we've got a lot to do. Let's get in the kitchen and get started on the peanut butter pate. Okay, so I know you're probably thinking, it's your birthday, why in the world are you celebrating peanut butter? Well, you know, many, many times I'm asked in interviews, if you were lost on a desert island, what would be the one food that you would take with you? And my answer is always peanut butter. It's the perfect food. It is so nutritious. It stays with you for a long period of time. It really curves that hunger. And you know, now I have an even greater fondness for peanuts because I have been on the tractor. I've put my hands in the dirt. I understand how they're grown. Ben Boyd introduced me to that this season with a visit to his farm in South Georgia. So Georgia peanuts are definitely in place in this recipe. So we had a little bit we had to do in advance. And you know, pate is actually having something that has to do with cream cheese, either mushrooms, liver, something like that. So maybe you've shied away from pate before, but this recipe is scrumptious. So I went ahead and got my bacon fried and you just wanna get it crisp and then crumble it. This is gonna be part of the garnish. And then for the actual pate, you're gonna melt some butter and I always use my lodge skillet. It just is so seasoned so well and it holds the heat. You've got to cook your chopped up portobello mushrooms for about five minutes. So you want to get them moist. They've incorporated that butter. All of that is soaked together really well. While that's cooking down, you're gonna take your room temperature cream cheese. That's when I add in my Georgia Grinders peanut butter. And if you have not tried this product and you love peanuts, you have got to try it because the actual peanut flavor is really, really there. Um, it's not so super sweet, so it really changes some of my actual recipes to a taste that I enjoy that much more. Once you've creamed that and gotten it nice and fluffy, your mushrooms and butter are done. Then you're gonna add in your freshly squeezed lemon juice. That really incorporates all the flavors. Get that stirred together, and then we will add that to the cream cheese and peanut butter mixture. And just stir it and get it together. It's gonna be really creamy now because the cream cheese is kind of melted. That's when you put it in the refrigerator for at least an hour to get it good and chilled. So I've done one in advance. It's all ready to go, and you see it firmed up really nicely in the refrigerator. And now I've kind of shaped it into a ball. So for this one, this is the adult version that you can use for, you know, appetizers, if somebody's coming over, you know, for a cocktail or before dinner. These are chopped chives and then that crispy bacon. And I'm just using a plate that's got kind of a rounded edge on it. And I'm just gonna take that ball and just start rolling it around in that mixture. And it's so colorful and pretty, and you can you know, take your hands and get it mashed in there. And then I'll probably put it back in the refrigerator just to get that firmed up really well. And then I can transfer it into whatever serving piece I wanna use for it. But just mash it really together. And in the presentation today, I'm gonna to show you how to turn this same 
recipe into something so cute, those kids will love it and they will never know there's mushrooms in it. Okay, so after the break, we're gonna get started on Jones, my husband's vegetable soup. Soup lovers, you do not wanna miss this. Come on back. Welcome back, everybody. And if you're just joining me, I don't know whether you can pick up on it, but I'm celebrating my birthday this weekend. You know, I used to hate the fact that my birthday was in the dead of winter, but now I love it because there's so many things that I enjoy doing in the wintertime. And you know, I have a milestone birthday coming up next year, the big 7-0. So, my goal is identity at 70, and I want you all to travel with me as I think of ways to improve, be a better person, have a little bit more energy, and just continue to give you some ideas for great food that you can share with your friends and family. So, this recipe is actually my husband's. His name is Andy Kilpatrick, but his middle name is Jones, and I call him Jones. So, this is Jones's vegetable soup, so don't tell anybody. This recipe is gonna be in the next cookbook. He doesn't even know it yet. So we've got some great things that are gonna go in here. So first of all, I love to use my Lodge Dutch oven. It just maintains such a great temperature when I'm cooking in it. And you're thinking, whoa, Vera, you've already got a major ingredient in there. So this is a honey-baked ham bone. I'm sure you're all familiar with honey-baked ham, but did you know that you could go in there just to buy a ham bone? the perfect thing to use when you're making soup. All right, I'm gonna get my induction cooktop going on like a medium heat. We're gonna add in Justin's bone broth, and this is chicken. So this is homemade broth that I'm here to tell you makes the biggest difference in this recipe. So we're gonna add all of that in there. His broths are so delicious, and they come in a lot of different flavors. Okay, I almost hate to mess this up because it's like a painting, but these are the ingredients, so you can just see how wonderful this soup is gonna be. So we've got diced onions, and you want to remember that this is a soup. So think about which ingredients you want to stand out and which ones kind of blend in anyway. Onions would be one, so you can cut those fine. Then this is chopped celery. And you know, you just love to have a little bit of crispness. And of course, the color's great. And then we've got the little Yukon yellow gold potatoes. So cut those up in an appropriate size that works on your soup spoon and also, you know, is easy to eat when you're eating from a spoon. Okay, we've got some diced carrots. All right, so now we're gonna start on some of the tomato ingredients. So this is just canned, you know, tomato sauce. And now I have to speak about my spoon. I cannot believe I still had this, number one. But I painted this spoon when I was in middle school. And back then, they called it junior high school. But the art teacher always had the best projects. And I would give these for teacher gifts. I love this spoon. And then these are stewed tomatoes that I have diced into little pieces. So see, everything is coming together here. Now we've got cabbage. So that might be an ingredient that you've never thought about putting in a soup. Makes it a little bit Southern and also is again, a flavor that is delicious. We've got some yellow corn and you could do the white corn if you prefer, but again, let's pop some color in there with that yellow. All right, so now we've got some green beans and those are just canned green beans, but you could use fresh and we're putting three starches in here. We've got the t potatoes, we've got rice, we have chopped up spaghetti, sugar, and that helps with the acidity of the tomatoes. We've got a little bit of bouillon, and this is actually ham bouillon. So that has a great flavor with the ham, pepper, and garlic. All right, so this is gonna come to a boil, and then you're just gonna let it simmer, at least an hour, but honestly, just let it simmer all day long. It'll be so good. 
All right, so in Vera's Corner today, I'm gonna give you some health tips that'll help you as we go into this year. And you remember, you're with me on my 70th birthday journey coming up. And then we're gonna get started on the German chocolate birthday cake. So come back. Vera's Corner is brought to you by Tax Slayer. You know, any time of year is the perfect time to get healthier. And today I'm gonna to give you some of my tips on things that I've improved on in my lifestyle to make that work for me. Get rid of tempting food in the house. If you have to plan for your weak moments, if it's around and you wanna indulge, you most likely will. Make meal prepping a priority. If you reach your lunch break or the end of the work day and have prepped meals available, you're less likely to go out to eat, which saves on calories and dollars. Choose a day of the week to make your plan. Do the grocery shopping and cook. You may choose to do all of these on the same day or break up tasks to make it more manageable. Find an exercise activity you look forward to. Running isn't for everyone. Try riding a bike, Zumba, or even skipping rope. There are many different options for incorporating movement into your schedule, and you never know what could become your new favorite. Share your goal with those you love, whether it's your immediate family or your social media followers. Sharing your goals with others is a good way to stay accountable when it gets hard. Finally, accept that this is a new lifestyle, not a short-term sprint to good health. Best of luck with your good health goals. Start free today at TaxSlayer.com. Welcome back, everybody, and I hope you enjoyed Vera's Corner today. You know, these health habits that you can just really get to be part of your lifestyle can be so beneficial to you many years later because I'm coming up on 7-0, and my first thing was Fit at 50, which was now 20 years ago, and I'm still enjoying all the fruits of my labor to be engaged in that process. All right, so, and now I'm getting ready to tell you how to make a German chocolate cake. So, you know, you can splurge on something like that when it's your birthday. So we had a little bit that we did ahead, but I want to tell you that this recipe is in the cookbook. One of the most beautiful pictures in the book is of that German chocolate cake. It's in, a, in my study, it, has, it looks so handsome there with the wood in the background. I just absolutely love it. But as a kid, I would go to a birthday party and the fancy birthday cake with the Crisco icing, I would never touch because I was used to eating homemade cakes. Either my mother would make it, my grandmother would make it. I knew the difference in a homemade cake as opposed to a cake mix. So I guess I was kind of a snobby birthday child. But this cake is really moist, really presents well, and it's always been my favorite cake. All right, so we have a little bit to do in advance. We've creamed the butter and the sugar. Then add your eggs one at a time, and I generally put those in a measuring cup so it's easy to do, let them incorporate really well. So that is where we are right now with the mixer. All right, my Sub-Zero and Wolf under the counter microwave is absolutely one of my favorite appliances. So to get this chocolate ready to go in there, I mix the water and the chocolate together, and this is German chocolate, Baker's German chocolate. I'm gonna put it in the microwave for one minute. Then you wanna stir it, it's not gonna be completely melted, but every microwave is different, so I suggest a minute, and then go back and do 30 more seconds, which is what I did here. So I'm gonna turn the mixer on and go ahead and start adding this cooled chocolate mixture to the sugar and butter mixture. And I wanna get every last bit of that out. So my OXO spatula is another one of my favorite utensils in the kitchen. All right. So we're also going to mix the dry ingredients together. So I've got baking soda, and I have salt. And this is one of my unusual wire whisks. It's perfect when you're doing this. And so generally speaking, I have this in a glass bowl. But as I continue to read comments from viewers and different ideas, somebody actually suggested 
you know, I love to use my pliable cups instead of like the measuring cup that I usually use, which is perfect for this. So we're just gonna keep this handy to be able to use when we're doing the ingredients there. All right, so now I've got my vanilla that I've added to my buttermilk. Just gonna whisk that around. Okay, so now I can start adding the dry with that cup. Let's see how easy that is. And you know, this is kind of a light chocolate when it finishes. And we're gonna alternate the wet and the dry. So now the buttermilk and vanilla will go in. All right. So once we get this all incorporated, it's gonna beat for just a few minutes to get it really nice and fluffy. All right, so now I'm gonna let this beat for a few minutes while I walk you through making the delicious icing that goes on this. So in a saucepan, I wanna melt butter over medium heat. Then I'm going to add my evaporated milk and sugar. And on the evaporated milk, you need two cups, so that's gonna be a can and then part of another can. Bring that to a boil, then take the egg yolks that you've prepared and whip those together, and then add half of your hot evaporated milk mixture to those egg yolks, and you're whisking very vigorously. This tempers the eggs so that they don't cook when they get close to that hot liquid. Then you're going to pour that mixture back into the saucepan and let it come back to a rolling boil. In the meantime, you've got a bowl with coconut. You're gonna add your chopped up pecans to that. You're gonna pour this hot mixture over the top of that. Stir it up really well. Once it's incorporated, add your vanilla extract to that. Now at this point, that mixture has to cool. So you can either do an ice bath or you can just put it directly into your refrigerator. All right, so this looks like it's about ready to go. So we're going to divide that into between three pans. I've had my oven preheated and we're gonna be getting that in the oven and these layers pop up so pretty and they're really, really moist. So I'll get these divided between the three pans when we come back from the break, we're gonna see all of the finished products, and I'll tell you a little bit more about my secrets to icing that cake. So I'll see you back in just a few minutes. Happy birthday, Vera! Oh my goodness, doesn't that look amazing? I mean to tell you, this has turned out so well, and I am so excited to share my birthday weekend with all of you because I'm only here because you all keep watching. You're making the recipes. You're telling us how much you love everything we're doing. So let's start with the first thing we did today. We started with the Georgia peanut pate. We did it with chives and we did it with crispy bacon and I've got all different kinds of crackers. So it just really makes a beautiful presentation. But remember I said I was gonna have a kid's version later. Well, this one I made to look like a peanut. So basically instead of a ball, I just you know used my hands to make it look kind of like a peanut, scored it, put the crushed up peanuts on top, used the bottom of a knife to make some indentions there, and then the cosmic crisp apples that don't turn brown or one of the things that you could spread it on or the graham crackers, and they will never know there's mushrooms in that. It's so healthy and just a great dish for a young person. Okay, so Jones's vegetable soup. Just look at that. And you know, as the meat of the ham bone comes off, you know, you can get some of that meat in there as well, but that just dips up so beautifully and is going to be what I'm gonna be having for lunch every day because I'm so guilty of just working right through lunch. So I'm really excited about this. Can't wait for you to try it. This with some cornbread and a salad really makes a nice lunch or a great supper. All right, the German chocolate layer cake, this cake is so scrumptious and it's really moist. It really bakes up 
you know, so pretty. And so let me kind of talk you through how I did this icing. So once the icing that I made earlier gets good and chilled, you're going to, I did a cake circle because I wanted to put it on the cake scan that I used when I was a little girl. So this, I've iced each layer and put a little, a good amount of icing between each one. And then you start with the sides and then do the top. So if you're ready to do a very Vera layer cake, this is a great one to start with because your icing skills do not have to be perfect. You're literally just smearing that icing on, but it comes out looking so great. So I've got my candles on there, it's beautiful. But I really wanna give a shout out right now to looking at this layer cake and thinking about Miss Rebecca Jefferson, who was such a big part of our company. She iced all the cakes that were photographed in the cookbook. And she recently passed away. And I just, I cannot ice a cake without thinking about her. And I wanna pay tribute to her and honor her today. So as we celebrate our my birthday coming up this weekend, I want you to know that I am so thankful for everything that I've been provided, not only from all of you, but as I've walked this path in my career with all the great friends I've made and associates. So remember, no matter what you do, do it in good taste. Happy birthday, Vera. Come back next week.